Right. So when we are talking or discussing about these things, what is going to be in there is now we will be talking about the maintaining the compliance and the audit management in the club. So when we talk about the compliance, compliance has the following objective. First is it is there, you know, there is actually a need to validate awareness and adherence. Okay. So there is a need that you want to validate our uh, annual uh, awareness and the adherence to some corporate obligation. The corporate they have some obligation for a, for example, some social responsibility, you know, within the organization, ethical concern, applicable laws and regulation and contact strategies and different different policies over here. So we just want to validate that. Yes, you know, the organization is a stick to them, right? I am, uh, you know, compliance related to the your know, ethics, okay, ethical concerns, right? You know, your applicable laws, whatever there. So we just want to validate that. Second, the compliance process. It is going to assess that the, uh, you know, what state of the, you know, your, I would say, of that awareness and adherence that we were, you know, we want to validate. What is the state? Focus on the description of responsibility. When we are talking about this thing, means we try to just uh, validate okay we were you know compliance was the validating the process of validating now this process is assessing that how much awareness and you know what is the adherence level over there it further does the assessment of the risk and potential cost of your non-compliance against cost of achieving the compliance so you will be comparing both things so if in the compliance, if I will go through achieving the compliance, it is costing me more than the fine that I have to pay you know, by being the non-compliance, that will be something different. So that is just one financial factor, but this will be having, if you are non-compliant, this will be having some of, you know, this is not the direct impact. There are going to be some indirect impact, like, you know, your reputation, that you don't have a reputation for following the compliance. And that could cause that you are not having the client client are not trusting you so your business is down and ultimately your profits are down right so your business goals are not being met over here so the second thing third thing you know finally it allow any organization from a security perspective to understand how shared responsibility model will give you the outline of the risk okay that the crowd service provider is going to maintain and the risk that the consumer is going to maintain and, and responsible for so it is going to just give you the whole outline that what kind of the you know your uh, risks are there okay what in the shared responsibility model what is maintained by your customer what is maintained by your user now when we talk about we just let's just talk about because we are talking about the laws and regulation here so what is the difference between a law and regulation? Uh, we are talking about the laws and regulations. So if we will be just simply you know, kind of comparing them. So with the laws, what we have, we have the application, you know, uh, these laws are applied to all the citizens. Okay, even the visitor, you know, visitor to a particular, you know, uh, region or regime that you are visiting, you know, that is laws are going to be applied to you as well then you know whereas if i'm talking about the regulation it is you know, uh, typically applied to a specific industry or to a practice then laws are mandated at national level at a state level or at a regional level whereas regulation can be non-government and entity mandate then there is violation if you do the violation of the law that could means loss of the freedom and even possession right there could be fine imposed to you that you know uh, okay nowadays in india one thing is going on you know i think too much that is just like you know uh, if someone is doing kind of a right or anything you know they start demolishing the property or you know in the corruption they start attaching the property of that person so you will be losing your possessions you know you'll be going to the jail loss of freedom while violation of the regulation is typically going to involve some type of fines or revocation of membership to that specific industry right 
you don't, you know, let's say that no longer you will be PCI DSS certified. You are not part of that thing. Right? That kind of a thing is going to be with the, you know, your regulations over there. Now, let's just talk, you know, we, you know, with the compliance, what we also need to consider is the rules and the responsibilities are. So when we are talking about the rules and responsibilities are, so cloud customer, auditor and provider, they must consider and understand how the regulatory implication for using a particular cloud, right? How regulatory complication, oh, sorry, complication, I'm saying, sorry, regulatory implication for using a particular cloud service or a cloud provider would apply to them. And they have to pay the particular attention to the cross trans, you know, cross border transfer of the information because this is going to play important part in the year as well plus in the all your legal issues policies in cloud most of the things you know revolve around that data and its cross border transfer of that information so as a customer auditor provider they all have to understand that how the regulatory implication are applied to their cloud service provider or to as you know cloud consumer to them and how it will be applied in the case of the cross border transfer transfer of data there is an assignment of compliance responsibility between the provider and the customer including all the indirect provider as well means provider of your providers as well like cloud carriers okay we were talking about that the network through which the traffic is you know going on and i was giving example there are example of the you know your route 53 service and as you see, you know own uh what we have uh have i forgot the name uh what is the service name i forgot as you own you know back end network where they travel the you know they send all the traffic so their own private they have their own private network through which they just you know start sending the uh, whole traffic around the globe and then no, no, no. it was the express route express route from the azure so these things are you know what they are doing they are just going to work with the either they are the service provider or they will be working with the you know some of the other service providers and you know like airtel in india or vodafone idea or bsnl those different different vendors they are working with so if there is a cloud carrier in between you should be aware about them as well right now there is also need to understand uh, you know uh, understanding of how you would be review a scheduled assessment and of certification related to the your cloud service provider and as we move to the cloud it is you know imperative that any organization they upskill their capability so that they know uh, they you know they are now contemporary with the cloud service provisioning working with the regulation and auditor who may lack experience with cloud computing technology is another issue that could come up so it is very necessary for us to upskill ourselves in you know maybe pretty much relevant in the cloud as well 